I am going to talk about improving the sensitivity of longitudinal free surfer using a nonlinear within subject template. I have nothing to declare, and I'd like to thank our data and funding sources. In brain morphometry studies, longitudinal design has become increasingly popular because it can improve sensitivity over cross-sectional processing. Longitudinal free surfer creates a subject-specific template, which we call base, by rigidly registering and voxel-wise median filtering the input time points into an unbiased midspace. The base template is then processed and information is extracted such as the PL and white surfaces shown in red and yellow. This base stream is unbiased since its coordinate system is chosen to be equidistant to the time points. In the longitudinal stream, this information is used to initialize the processing of the individual time points. This is a robust and unbiased approach, but what happens in the presence of large anatomical change? Let's have a look at a subject with considerable atrophy between time points 1 and 2. Computing the template from rigidly aligned time points here results in averaging voxels across tissue classes and causes blurring, as is highlighted by the arrows. As a result, the initialization of longitudinal time points may be far from the ideal solution. Note that this effect may be present even if it is invisible to the eye. Clearly, a rigid within subject template is not optimal in the presence of large anatomical changes. To address this, we propose a longitudinal free surface stream that leverages a nonlinear template. In the rest of the talk, I'd like to go over the template creation process, visually compare image quality of the rigid and deformable templates, assess sensitivity to cortical atrophy in data from subjects with Alzheimer's disease, assess test-retest reliability by analyzing repeat scans, and finally, show some examples of how inaccurate initialization can impact the surface placement. To create the base image, we use N's multivariate template construction adapted to perform nonlinear registration only. The process is initialized with the rigid template. First, each time point is initialized with a rigid transform to this common space. And second, it is individually and non-linearly registered to the current template using and sin. Third, we update the template to be the voxel-wise median of the warped time points. And this process is repeated a number of times. Now, for longitudinal processing, each time point is mapped to the common rigid space, just as in standard longitudinal free surfer. Let's compare the rigid and deformable templates in terms of image quality. Going back to the subject with atrophy we just looked at, using deformable registration produces a better quality template and removes the blurring that resulted from averaging voxels across tissue classes. We assessed sensitivity to cortical thinning in a subset of T1-weighted MRI data from ADNI. Specifically, we compared 50 Alzheimer's disease subjects to 50 healthy controls with time points at 0 and 24 months. We selected the most likely healthy and diseased subjects based on a score attributing one point for each of the conditions shown in the table, where the reference thresholds were evaluated as the median over subjects with mild cognitive impairment. Data was processed using the standard longitudinal free surface stream, except for the initialization with the segmentation and surfaces from the non-rigid template that were rigidly mapped to each of the time points. For analysis, we fitted group-wise annual atrophy rates using a linear mixed effects model controlling for sex, age, and using a random intercept for each subject. Shown here, 
are the aging slopes across all subjects for different cortical structures in millimeters per year. Blue is cross-sectional processing, expected to be the noisiest. Orange is longitudinal processing with a rigid template. And yellow is longitudinal processing with a deformable template. The central plot shows disease slopes across Alzheimer's subjects only. In general, the stream with the deformable template tended to estimate lower aging slopes and higher disease slopes. This boosted the statistical power for structures associated with Alzheimer's-related atrophy. For example, the parahippocampal gyrus, whose f-statistic went up here, meaning its p-value went down. To assess test-retest reliability, we analyzed T1-weighted structural scans from the Myriad dataset. These were back-to-back -back scans from 50 subjects, where repeat scans were not contingent on subject compliance. We processed each subject with each of the pipelines and summarized cortical thickness differences between the first and the second scan as absolute symmetrized percent change. We found the thickness differences obtained with the deformable template to be similar to the standard longitudinal stream that is typically in the range of 2 to 4 percent. For a few of the ADNI subjects, using the deformable instead of the rigid template resulted in improved longitudinal surface placement. Shown here are the PL surfaces of a longitudinal time point for two separate subjects. Let's zoom in. The yellow surfaces were obtained using the rigid template and mistakenly include Dura. This is not the case for the red surfaces, which were obtained with a deformable template. For both surfaces, the longitudinal processing was identical. The only difference was the surface initialization. If we compare the base templates for each subject, using the deformable registration slightly increased the image sharpness. As a result, the base surfaces no longer include Dura, which means better initialization of the longitudinal time points. Let's summarize. We find that introducing a non-linear within subject template increases the suitability of longitudinal free surfer for large change, in that it improves the sensitivity of the stream to cortical atrophy, while it does not impact test-retest reliability. However, these improvements come at the cost of an increased computational burden, with a runtime of about one hour per answer registration. The template creation takes eight hours for only two time points. To speed this up, we are currently working on using a deep learning based registration. In addition, there is unused information in the warp fields, which may be used to further reduce variability, for example, by mapping the base surfaces nonlinearly instead of rigidly for initialization. Thank you very much.